Shoot. Good afternoon. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. Nice little week. Back at it again. You know, two under our, our belt. Going on the third. Trying to go one and zero this week. This is a minor thing, but there was uh, I don't know maybe the pregame introductions. Nobody was introduced, offense mm -hmm. or defense. Did you know what it, what it, you know anything about that? Yeah, we uh, we had discussed it as captains, and we talked to the. Uh, Talk to the head man. We were just saying like we want to kind of be introduced as a team. I think it's more emphasis on team rather than the individual. I mean, a lot of the guys on the offense, uh, not too many first year players besides Dalton. But uh, for us, like we want to be introduced as a team. I think it's like signifies we together in this. Uh, we move as one, uh, offense and defense. And uh, you know, it's, it's I think it's cool to be called out. But I'm like I'm an older player, so I kind of like I've been through it. Maybe maybe one day. I told Ken K. Maybe one day. Right now, we're gonna focus on us as a whole. You guys have had a strong team identity already, though. Is there something that led to, like, hey, let's make this significant step? No, nah, it's just uh, I think it's an everyday thing, uh, you know, every play thing, uh, every rep thing. I think it's just more so kind of like uh, building off of it. You know, it, it kind of doesn't start anywhere, stop anywhere. It just kind of got to keep going and uh, go from there. I think that was just another step that we're going in the right direction. So. so it wasn't in response to maybe what happened in the Jet game and maybe a kind of we're all in this together type thing? I, no. It, it wasn't born out of that? No, not at all. I mean, it was our first home game. You don't get, I and mean, we won't get announced for the away game. So it's not. It was our first home game. We were just like, we kind of want to do things together. So nah, not at all. I mean, it's easy to be focused when things go wrong, and you want to try to correct it. How have you yeah. seen the focus and and really focusing it on, on this week and carrying things over when things went so right on Sunday? I mean, it hasn't been too much of a switch up. Like it's not so much the result, but more so the process. Of course, you want the. You want the best result, uh, regardless of what you're doing, as far as like outcome-wise. But sometimes you don't get the best result, and you just got to date back to okay, how was the preparation during the week? What were the things that you did or didn't do? I feel like we had great preparation, even even week one, we had good preparation. I mean, we got all the camp, you got all of the offseason to do X, Y, Z. We just didn't come out on top that day. Uh, luckily, we might, we will get to play them again. But uh, going into the second week, you know, just kind of getting the ball rolling, learning what kind of offense you have, learning your identity, what you're good at, uh, what you're having a lot of success at, and the things that you can build off of. So I feel like it just goes into uh, not so much um, corrections, but more so the process. Because the process, if you had a good process and you lost, we, we can live with that. You, know you did everything you could. You did everything you could during the week you prepared the right way uh i can i can live and die and sleep just fine with that but if your process was off and you didn't do xyz during the week how could you have been better then you probably got to go back to the drawing board but we got different results last week we played well as offense uh, we were flying around a lot of people making a lot of plays uh, we put the we didn't put the ball on the ground we ran the ball extremely well um so you know just different results just got to keep that same consistent process i heard you use the word identity so how much does putting a game like that on tape especially in week two yeah right help to get you to a point where you form yeah it's crazy because even i mean week one you could take some good things a lot of good things from week one as far as like offensively and defensively like when you're building your identity i feel like one or two plays don't break you they won't make you either you know i'm saying like if we won that game after all that had happened in that game then maybe we would have been having another conversation but did we play the cleanest of football no and no and no range so uh even week two going back to could we have done some things better like yeah we played we had a lot of success uh, we scored a lot of points defense was playing balls to the wall but um, how, how, how are things, you know I'm saying, like, as far as, like, how could we have done things better? I feel like uh, we had a lot of success, but always room to grow, areas to grow. So uh, each week is different. You build that identity. I guess we'll talk more about right week, week eight, you know what I'm saying, week seven. You know what I'm saying, when you put enough on tape to be like, this is what we're good at. This is what we like to do. Um, how can we get better? How about 17, you... his game, I mean, he, he talked about it here yesterday about how smart he was, efficient, mm -hmm. that sort of a thing, decision-making. I mean, uh, how much of a feel for that did you have? I mean, I feel like, uh, I mean, when I'm dating back into the game, I feel like he has some of the lowest completions, he's incompletions that he's ever had. I think he damn near went, almost was perfect. Uh, him being him, you know, responding. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, the week, week one, you know, you got a lot of Super Bowls being one week one, a lot of Hall of Famers week one. Um, you go back to the, you know, football, playing football the second week, you know, you shake back and then, like, you have the naysayers or the people that's going to say, okay, yeah, okay, they look kind of good or they, they still didn't look as good. Like, I mean, you kind of get lost in the noise if you pay attention to it for us. I mean, you just got to focus on one game at a time. He's playing extremely well. Um, 
I still, I still think he got some more in him too. So uh, it's early in the season. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get a, a good one this week and keep this thing rolling. Steph, your football journey started in Maryland, and now you're going back. Mm -hmm. And I think you're about 20 yards away from being one of only six guys in the NFL right now to have 9,000 yards. Mm -hmm. What would it mean for you to kind of reach that career accomplishment in your home state? It's cool. I mean, I try not to get lost in it too much. I'm aiming for something a little higher, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's one, maybe a half a step in the right direction. But it is cool to go home. You know what I'm saying? I love going home. I always have like a little like, you know, maybe a little chip on my shoulder because, uh, you know, your home your home teams are the first team that got their eyes on you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they pass up on you. Sometimes they grab you. But uh, for me, I just feel like uh, I like going home. I like being around my family. I like seeing my mom and, and the sense, even though she comes to games and stuff. But it's different. It kind of gives you that little feel of being at home again and being in high school and, you know, seeing your family, your friends. Uh, it's always a good time. You know, I kind of like, I, I, I really like going home. Do you have more people a, coming? Did you grow up as a Washington fan? No, I was a Cowboys fan. Still a... <laughs> Do you have more people coming than usual for this game? I mean, week to week, I have a lot of people coming to the game in general, but, you know, I'm... I got, I got, I got some tickets, but I'm not responsible for everybody. I always tell them that. You want to come? Come. Don't be blaming me. <laughs> Oh, you can go. When you face a team that has this kind of quality defensive yeah. line, does that change anything from a wide receiver perspective? Well, no. Nah, I mean, I always I was told a long time ago by Coach George Stewart, and Coach Henry kind of e echoes this, uh, as good as they are in the back end as far as like DBs, even across the league, when you face a team with a, a D-line like the Jets or like San Fran or like even even Washington, the Commanders, uh, your race when you're running your route isn't with the DB, it's with the D-line. You know what I'm saying? As quick as they get back there, is, you need to be running your route with some efficiency. You need to be clean. You need to be crispy because they're going to get back there. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be some pressure applied. Luckily, I got a quarterback that can move around a little bit, maybe shake some guys off. But that race is always between you and the D-line. So get off the ball. You, know you need to get off the ball. You need to be running uh, with speed and tempo. So, yeah. I don't, I don't do anything different for her. For her. I just had it in my mind that they got a good D-line. This might be obvious, but uh, it's like you've always been good at getting the cornerback to respect you deep. Oh, it's like nobody's you. making a living squatting on you. But, yeah. I mean, do you – is that something you try to – what do you think about that? Is that something you try to establish early in any game? Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's actually a conversation I always have with Josh and, and Doris. Uh, I'm like, listen, I don't play that. You know what I'm saying? Because from my standpoint, like, if I make him respect me vertically, like, it'll, it'll soften him up a little bit. Like, even that um, slight second of, you know, second guessing, like, damn, he might go deep. Like, I remember the past couple of years, like, it was like we weren't running so many deep routes. And I was like, listen, I don't care if it's completed or not completed. You know what I'm saying? I'll do my best to make a play on it. But to have a DB respect you going deep is like number one. So when guys do squat or do want to like kind of like play the odds, I kind of make it a point of emphasis to be like, you know, uh, early on, maybe even this, I'll, I'll go deep the first play. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell them, listen. I don't like people sitting on me because if you sit on me, that means you don't respect me. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't respect me, we got another conversation. As you've gotten to know Deontay more and more, what stands yeah. out to you about his personality? A real laid back. You know what I'm saying? A guy that's uh, super fast. Super fast guys do everything slow. They talk slow, they walk slow, they jog slow. And I'll tell him, like, listen, actually, I need you to do things a little faster for me. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he's super cool. You know what I'm saying? He's also a kid uh, from Maryland as well. So, you know, he, he plays with a little chip on his shoulder. He's small, but he plays real big. So um, I look forward to him making some plays. You know what I'm Hopefully we get some, some good weather. He can run around a little bit. He's done some cool. He's done some cool work in the community with mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. Is that something you guys have talked about? I know that's important to you too. And either way, yeah. what does that mean for him to have that as a passion point? I mean, I love it. I mean, we haven't talked about it personally. You know, we spend a lot of time here at work, try to focus on the work stuff. But um, proud of him and kudos to him taking those steps in the right direction. As far as like not even that just as a player, but as a man and in your community. Did you see Ken's video? No. On, on Twitter. Well, I don't know. If what did he Twitter. do? <laughs> he, had a, he had a reaction this time to a touchdown instead of a, a bad play. Okay. He was up there kind of like hitting those. Was it fake or was it real? Yeah. I think it was real. But I was just wondering. Let me like, see you do it. What? Why are you being shot, bro? It was kind of like that. Oh, like, yeah, we got it right. Oh, yeah. Send me that clip. You know what I'm saying? I like to post those in my little dump, like, reactions. <laughs>
from a speed standpoint, back to Deontay, mm -hmm. what does he bring to the offense? Because you're, you're getting the ball to him in space. Just what mm -hmm. can a guy like that do to open up the field for everybody else? It's just a lot of guys that can move. Like, with that vertical stretch on the defense really makes them like, damn, they got a couple guys that can run. Um, we can't just be sitting back, like, go back to, like, just sitting on routes and stuff like that. Guys that can run kind of gives you that immediate threat of, okay, maybe we can sit things down or maybe we can maybe we can beat them over the top. I saw You saw, like, with the Jets game, they kind of, like, just stayed over the top. It's a lot of guys that can run fast. You know what I'm saying, like, let's stay over the top and try to keep everything in front of us, especially, like, with us, with a team like us, we got a lot of guys that can do a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? So have success is try to keep it all in front of you. Don't let them steal one deep. You know what I'm so for us, uh, moving down the field methodically is always going to be a big thing until they creep up. You know what I'm saying? They all creep up eventually it's when they do. A lot of guys can do a lot of things. James Cook is someone who came off a big game yeah. last week. Have you seen any changes from him off the field or on the field from year one to year two? Anything that has stood out to you? No, nah, not necessarily. I mean, I've, like I said, we ran the ball extremely well last week. It's just he's just been the guy. You know what I'm saying? He's got a lot more opportunities. I make fun of him a whole lot. I think I'm on him harder than anybody else is on him. Like, he wants to have success. He's grinding all the time. And then I just tell him, like, I need you to break some more tackles. I need you to make some things happen. Like, because we got two backs that if we get in that red zone, Jim, Jimbo, you, you're not you're not going to be on that field, Jimbo. <laughs> we got we got Tay Turner and we got Damian. They run extremely hard. They're going to punch it in. So I said, my only recipe for you is uh, you want to score, you got to score from depth. You know what I'm saying? So just making it hard on him. He, he wants it too, so it's easy. We got, a, we got a great group of guys, guys that love football, guys that, you know, you know, want the best grind, and you know we got we got some good guys. You just trying to push them and get the best out of them. And you know I can tell like on the sideline when I'm pushing him, he's taking the information like I got it, I got it. Like you know what I'm saying I'm on it. So, Steph, I, do stuff. what do you see from Gabe? We just talked to him a second yeah. ago, and I asked him. You know, last year, uh, early in the season, obviously he was dealing with a high ankle and, and battling through that for the mm -hmm. balance of the year, and he kind of smiled. And, and do you see him healthy now? Is he back to – what's your take on him and his game and how he's contributing? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, it's more so for y'all. Like, I've never questioned Gabe or, like, you know what I'm saying, I see it every day. I see his work ethic. I see his grind. Um, I never questioned him. I just knew he was banged up last year, so it wasn't, like, an honest assessment. Like, I'm like, damn, like, a guy got banged up. People were like, damn, they want him to do this, that, and a third. And it's like, he's trying. For sure, he's trying. Um, but those injuries are real. You know what I'm saying? He was battling something serious. So, for me, um, my biggest thing is go out there and be you. He's been him for the past couple of weeks. It's early and I want him to continue to stay fast, like stay the course, like stay where you at. You're grinding, you're making plays. Um, just show him, show and prove, you know what I'm saying? Not so much show and tell, just show and prove because we all know what you can do, but let's put it on tape now, you know what I'm saying? Let's make it consistent enough. And he's been doing it. You know, he's been making plays, uh, I guess all the naysayers and stuff like that. It'll get quiet after a while, you know what I'm saying? But for him, I just want him to continue to stay consistent. Consistency is everything, you know what I'm saying? People want to see each and every week, each and every day, each and every rep. So he's been doing a great job. Um, Positive reinforcement more so with Gabe. James said that you're one of the few guys he feels comfortable with. Oh, look at that. Those people See? that he's Told comfortable you. with, Told you. He, he opens up, yeah. right? shows us stuff that most of us don't. Yeah. What do you see from his personality as, as one of those in that, that comfortable core? He's kind of hard on himself. Like, um, he doesn't talk to everybody, and he's kind of real to himself. But, you know, I bother him a little bit. And, you know, he really talks really low. So even if you are around him, you won't really hear him speak. So it's crazy. Like, you said that. It's crazy that you said that or he said that because he doesn't talk to everybody. He doesn't really like everybody. He's, like, more so, like, introvert. You know what I'm saying? But football-wise, he's a baller. You know what I'm saying? And he has some personality. He just won't show it to everybody. You know what I'm saying? I like it that way. And as a good friend, I'm going to tell you that man's business. <laughs> I do have one more question on him, though. You've known him for a while. Has he always gone by Jimbo, or is that a Bills thing? No, I think that's some new. I think that's something new. I call him Little Four because you know the original Four is Dalvin. You know what I'm saying I was with his older brother. Not to say that I'm older or anything, but you know what I'm saying I was with. I call him Little Four. I call him James. I, Jimbo. I think. I think Josh started that. So. Shout out Jimbo, uh, and congratulations. He had a baby today, so little, little Jimbo, I guess. And uh, hopefully he's a football player. Y'all have a good one.